Okay, so I want to show you a couple of techniques on how to add some things to this uh, and sort of how to connect things to this so that you can make your sculpture. So we have this extra half a clay here, half a chunk of clay that we cut off from the beginning. All right, so use as much of this or as little of this as you need to create your sculpture. So it helps to have a plan or a sketch of some kind to, um, to start out with so you know what, you, what parts you need to build. Okay, so uh, the other thing to be said about this is it doesn't have to stay round. You can certainly flatten this out, um, not flatten it out into a pancake, but maybe flatten it out into a, a cube or a rectangular prism. Uh, you can flatten one end out just by simply tapping it on the table so it stands up. It's totally up to you as the artist to figure out how to shape this. Just be careful you don't smush it too much because you don't want to pop the bubble that's inside here. Okay. So uh, I just did a quick little sketch. I think I'm just going to turn this shape into a little penguin or a little bird of some kind. So uh, your sketch doesn't have to be anything super detailed. Unless you want it to be, then go for it. It's all yours. Um, I want to take this and I want to flatten out this base here a little bit. Okay. So that my sculpture has a, a, a bottom and I can stand it up. All right. So from my sketch, I have a couple of extra parts to make. So I want to put this off to the side and bring in my extra chunk of clay. So I know that I need two wings for my bird, so I want to portion those out properly. So it's nice to have this in a nice sort of even block so that I can cut um, the approximate same amount of clay and that'll help ensure that I get two sort of equal in size parts. And that's kind of a, a good teacher tip to use if you know you need two symmetrical or two parts to just start out with the same amount of clay. Okay, so um, I'm going to start by actually sort of rounding this up. So if I make something flat like this, let's say this is going to be the wing, okay, and I add this to my piece, um, the sort of rule for this, again, is if it's thicker than your index finger or skinnier than your pinky, right, if it's somewhere in this thickness, um, you don't need to hollow things out. So I wouldn't have to hollow this out if I decided to stick this onto my piece. Um, I am going to flatten it out just a little bit, though, because I don't want it to be that thick. Okay. So I'm just going to work with this shape here until I get the shape that I'm looking for. So we're going to call this the little wing. All right. So we've got this wing. Again, that's not too thick. I can keep that on there without hollowing it out. You can certainly make things thinner if you'd like. Stretch that out a little bit if you'd like. So if I have parts that are this size, I don't need to hollow them out. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and make two of these and then I'll show you how to attach them. All right. So attaching these onto my hollow sphere or hollow potato or hollow whatever you want to call it, your hollow bubble. How about that? Okay, so to attach this again, it's nice if you can score and slip them together, but if all you can do is score because you don't have a water source, it's not the end of the world um, as long as you blend really well, okay? If your clay is wet enough and fresh enough, you, it's okay to get away without the slipping. Okay, so if I wanted to add this on, and I want it to kind of stick out just a little bit like this, so it looks kind of awkward right now, right? So then my job is to mold and, and push that together until it looks the way that I want it to look. So I can use my fingers to smooth this in. I can use my spoon to smooth this in. Okay, the best tool that you're probably going to have is your fingers. You'll be able to kind of really get into some of those nooks and crannies a little bit more. You'll be able to control the pressure a little bit more. Okay, so you can see I've kind of got this added on here. So I'm going to do that to the other side and make sure that they're even. Okay. All right, so I think that's kind of the way that I want it, and I could go back and play with this as I continue to work. All right. Um, if I'm adding something larger, or more three-dimensional than 
something thin like this. You're going to want to hollow that out first. So you can do that a couple of ways. So if I have this chunk of clay here, and let's say I wanted to add that as a head, um, this is a solid piece of clay. So if it's thicker than my thumb, or if it's about a three quarters of an inch or an inch thick on length and width and depth, you need to hollow this out. If you do something this solid, you uh, risk having some air pockets in there and sort of things blowing up. So the easiest way to do that is to do a couple of, you can do this a few ways. You can um, take the handle maybe of your fork or your knife or whatever, and you can just scoop out the inside if you'd like. Okay. And just continue to scoop out the inside to make that hollow. Or if you uh, want to just make a second pinch pot, you can certainly do that. Okay, so let's say I wanted to add this to here, all right? If I wanted to add this on top to make sort of the head, all right? Um, there's air trapped in here and there's air trapped in here. So what I need is an escape route, okay? This is where my pencil or my pencil tool comes in. So if the air is trapped into here, it needs a way to escape. Otherwise, when it goes into the kiln and the pressure and the steam and the moisture build up, the air and the steam and the pressure is going to find a way to escape. So you need to create that route so that your things don't pop off. All right, so to do that, I'm just going to poke a hole through my sphere. Okay, so this creates an escape route, an escape chamber, right? So the air that's trapped in here can now escape through this hole that's on uh, into the main chamber. And then at some point during while I'm building, I'll either carve an opening into here or I can simply poke a hole in the bottom. And so now that allows the air to escape from here to the main body and then escape out the bottom so that then there's no air pockets, there's no air bubbles in there. Um, everything's engineered so that nothing blows up. Okay, so here's just a couple of tips uh, for you. I hope it helps you. Feel free to use your pencil tool when you're all done to add details and carve things in. Otherwise, be creative and happy, happy building.